Welcome to Recovering Addict. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully my microphone's on. If you can't hear me, let me know immediately because last night I talked for about 10 <laughs> minutes and didn't even realize it because I wasn't reading the comments. Everybody's like, trying to read his lips. Like, Dang awesome. that. My goodness. All right. We got a good show for you tonight. So hopefully you watched the last two episodes because we went through character defects. Character defects is something very important here in uh, recovery because if we don't understand why the heck we're thinking bad and doing, you know, all these bad stuff and it causes us to slip up, trip up. Uh, we're never going to solve the problem and stay sober. Yes. Thank you, Polly. What's up, Michael Tudor? Welcome. Hey, What's Mike. going on? Welcome What's to the up? show. What's up, everybody? All right. So what we are going to do tonight, we we're going to go through our character defect inventory sheet. So we're going to read our 24 hours a day. We'll take our inventory and then we'll bust into step three. I want to get into a new way of thinking. So I want to teach everybody something I learned in my root cause analysis program that I was in. So that when up on base, I'm a CPI practitioner, which is continual process improvement. And guess what? Recovery is a process. And if we don't continually improve it, we may not succeed. So it's a good idea to continually improve your process. And during this, I learned root cause analysis. And I want to go through the five whys, give you a good example of what that means. And I'm going to read you a really awesome quote that I think I'm going to read twice just because it's amazing. Then we'll read our 24 hours a day. Take our what? You forgot to say co-host. Oh, I'm LT. I'm a recovering addict alcoholic. I'm Felice Weaver, your co-host. Thanks, babe. <laughs> I'm your co-host. And we have a new addition to the show. This is Andy. Hi. Our neighbor. Hi, Andy. I posted it on Facebook. Uh, the restrictions have been lifted. I posted it on the Facebook. Stay away. I don't care if they're restricted or not. We don't want nobody coming over. Bam, here's Andy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's our neighbor, so. Oh, yeah. No, Andy's like family. Andy's our other daughter. We got hey, Gordon cool. in the house. David Miller, what's happening? I'm glad you made it back, too. What's Sweet. up, Mark? Dave Miller. Glad to be back. Yeah, we got Bye, Raina. Awesome. What's up, fam? I haven't seen you for a minute. Raina! Denise, make sure you say hi to Denise. Be nice to Denise. <laughs> yes, what's up, Merck? Boom, boom. Welcome, Merck. I haven't seen you for a while. Been a minute. Still got Mert hanging out, and we got Bill chilling. What's up, brother? How you doing? How you, how's everybody doing today? Is everybody's head and heart in recovery? Tracy, whoa, I think somebody's got a birthday. I've seen it on Facebook. What's up, Aubrey? Welcome back. Glad you're here. Hi, Mom. Glad you're here. He's doing good. We're drifting. Oh, you're a drifter. I noticed that in the background today in our little Zoom meeting. Didn't look like the normal place. I'm waiting for pizza and a cheese. Imagine that. The Philly guy waiting for pizza and some cheese steak. From Angelo's. From, Ange that's from my, Angelo's. That's my brother's name. Yeah, that's Felice's brother's name's Angelo. He's not Italian. Dude, we're doing really good out here. Uh, restrictions are lifted, but we're in Utah, so it doesn't even, whatever. I don't think they ever really were restricted out here. Yeah. Some, a couple things closed down, barber shops. The aisleways are <sighs> traffic controlled now. Uh, the guy at Big Five Sporting Warehouse thought he was a bouncer at a nightclub standing there guarding the door. But that's about it. Other than that, we're doing good. Aubrey's doing so good. So good. That's good. I can feel it. I can feel your energy. The energy. Michael Teeter says, new goddaughter, Sapphira Rainy Real. I can't, I can't read, bro. Sorry. Five pounds, six ounces. That's 17 a and a baby. quarter, a little baby, baby. 729, proud godfather. All right, congratulations, Michael. Lucky lady, five pounds. A little baby. That'd be weird to be born in this era in this time. What's up, Cody? Making me jealous, Hi, man. I just clicked on your picture and I can smell campfire. Man. <sighs> campfire and hot. Did you guys get the marshmallows that have the chocolate already in the middle? Man, I want to go camp. Those look cool. Hey, Dwight, welcome. Glad you're here. Tracy got her book right on. So we are jumping into chapter three of that book, but first I want to steer our thoughts towards that. So without further ado, good vibes. Yes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Positive vibes. Let's actually, let's do our one thing we do every once in a while. Take three deep breaths. Think about positivity during this little breathing exercise. Ready? One, two, three. And three, let out the stress of the day. Just get rid of it, man. It's a, it's evening. It's time to come coming down. It's time to 
fill our mind and with positive recovery and a little moment, a couple, couple seconds silent for the still suffering addict. All right. Mm, I feel s'mores. better already. I want to go camping. S'mores. Yeah. Alan, welcome. I feel Great like evening. Two more hours of work till the weekend. I feel right like on, we need brother. to do a live show in front of a campfire. We should do a live show in front of a campfire. We could do that. Oh, we made s'mores. Mm-hmm. Melissa, I just seen you. Hey, mama. I just seen your face on a, a different show. Heck yeah. We stopped and got a little pizza. We have a new addition to the Sawyer House. Oh, right on. Ooh. We'll tell her or him. or is, is the Sawyer House a girls only house? I feel like it. And then the other one's like the boy house. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, bird. Feel that. <sighs> Release. Release. <laughs> That's how Merck say something really positive up here. Right there. Boom. Yes. Glad you're here, brother. Amen. Us too. I can't see one. We are rooting for Cody. I haven't seen Veronica for a minute. I wonder how she's doing. We better reach out. I don't know. I'll send her a message. If you guys get close enough to us and you got in our messages and stuff, a day or two goes by and I haven't heard from you, I start worrying. And then on that third day, fourth morning, I'll be reaching out. I'll be reaching out. You ain't getting too far. Emily, what's up? Welcome. Welcome, recovering family. Everyone looks forward to the weekend. I, however, only work weekends. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you have the week. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don. Welcome. Don. Different Don. Oh, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's in the house. Hi, oh, Naomi. Wow. Heck yeah. All right, let's jump into our May 1st AA thought of the day from 24 hours a day. The AA thought of the day is the AA program is one of charity because the real meaning of the word charity is to care enough about other people to really want to help them. To get the full benefit of the program, we must try to help other alcoholics. You can add addicts to that as well. We may try to help somebody think we have... We might try to help somebody and think we have failed, but the seed that we have planted may bear fruit sometime. We never know the results. Even a word of ours might have. But the main thing is to have charity for others, a real desire to help them, whether we succeed or not. Here's the question. Do I have real charity? Ask yourself that. And our meditation. This this got deep on me. I read it. I had to read it like twice. So ready, guys? Everybody, put your uh, focusers on because this meditation got uh, deep. I even had blinders. yeah horse blinders. You're just okay. Here we go. All material things, the universe, the world, even our bodies, may be internal. Thought expressed in space. The more. The physicists and astronomer, astronomers reduce matter the more it becomes a mathematical formula, which is thought. In the final analysis, matter is thought. When eternal thought expresses itself within the framework of space and time, it becomes matter. Our thoughts within the box of space and time cannot know anything firsthand except material things. But we can deduce that outside the box of space and time is eternal thought which we can call God. What? That's deep. That is deep. Oh. And the prayer of the day? I pray that I may be a true expression of eternal thought. I pray that God's thoughts may work through my thoughts. Amen. I learned that a long time ago. I used to sell Kirby's. Some of you know that. Some of you don't. And I was really good at it. I learned how to close. Closing was really good. But a guy came in and he started talking about how thoughts are things. And that's why you can really think things into existence. If you believe, right? We went through that when we were talking about belief and how everything, the Wright brothers, they believed they could design an airplane and fly. And they did. The guys that built Mount Rushmore, he, the guy believed that he could carve giant faces into a mountainside. He believed it first and then he did it. Thoughts are things. You can recover. If you believe you can recover and you're going after the tools of recovery, you can. I like it. Alan said he needed these two live streams. My attitude was going down the tubes. 
I feel a lot better after listening to Sober James and beginning here. Right on. Well, I'm glad you're here. Hopefully, we can cheer you up and get you into a good weekend. The last two hours of your shift there. Alicia. Alicia, what up? And we are in her family album now. I love that. That's cool. Faith has to work 24 hours a day in through us or we perish. Think on that. Amen. Amen. There's no doubt. That's the truth. Ah, I know, brother. It's something about the coming up on 30 days or the four, the uh, 60 or 90 days. Somewhere in there, you're at it. That's why I said you got to up your game. You got to up your strategy and your, your strength at that moment because your addict has realized, wait a minute. My usual tricks aren't working. Let's up our game. And if we ain't prepared to up our game with our addict's game and stay ahead, actually, we got to get ahead of the addict and stay ahead of the addict because the addict is very cunning and alcohol is baffling, cunning, and powerful. Uh, it'll get us. It got me. 47 days in, I relapsed. And then not to mention all the million of other times I tried to quit and, and failed, tried and failed, tried and failed. But we don't have to try and fail. Like when I was failing before, the longest I had quit the last six years was a six to seven day span. And each time I tried to quit like that, I even went to an AA meeting, was tripped out by what the heck was going on around me, passing around a coin. What the heck is this place? Uh, and every time I went back to drinking after a try to quit, I would drink more. Then I would try to quit and then I would end up drinking more. And it seemed like that when I tried to quit smoking, I'd be like, that's the last cigarette. Whew. Next thing I know, the next day or a couple hours later, I'm smoking a full cigarette, lighting that cigarette with the cigarette, lighting that one with the, you know, it's just weird how it comp compounds itself right there. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Hi, John. What's up, Emily? Topic right there. Step three. What's the topic? We're going, we are going to start working our way towards step three and chapter three of this book called The Steps That We Took by Joe McHugh. If you don't have a copy and you want to support our channel, in the description of my videos uh, are links to books. Click in there, snag you up one of these books, and follow along with us and take notes. Aubrey says, I live by making right decisions and act on them before better tomorrows. Amen. Right decision. Hey, you know what? That's kind of our topic is making decisions. Because if you look at step three, it says, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood him. Good night, Amar. Someone's going to bed? He says Amar. guys. Oh, sweet. Living Sober Book Early Recovery. Nice. Yes. Anyone tried the Living Sober Book for Early Recovery? Got some interesting tips for people in early recovery. Really? I'll have to get that one. Can you write that down while I'm typing this up? Yes. I have that book. Um, I'm trying to compile a library. And as I compile the library, we're going to go through it here on YouTube and Facebook live every night. And if you guys want, grab a pen, take notes, because this is only going to help us remember tools because maybe we, we went through the IOPs. Maybe we went through, uh, we go to AA all the time. Maybe we've done the 12 steps. Then what, how are we furthering our education in recovery? Um, I always think, you know, you did your IOP, you did your 12 steps. Now what, what are we doing to further our education and relapse prevention? Uh, this channel is designed to help you come off drugs. If you are battling that, you're going back and forth between them, out drugs or alcohol. And once you finally have kicked it and you're in recovery and then start understanding what recovery is, we're going to here to help walk you through that. And then post that, uh, continue on this up escalator. If you got years of sobriety and we want to continue to learn and give out and be able to be that wise guy in AA and NA meetings who always has the right thing to say at the right time. He, that guy knows what to say because he's educated himself. And that's what this channel is providing anybody is to um, learn that education. So continual process improvement, CPI, that is improving processes. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a story. There's a five whys to solve any problem. It's five whys, and it could be more than five, but to find a problem. So if there's a problem, there's a root cause a root cause. Okay. So the problems here, the problem that you're facing is right here, but the answer to the problem, the root cause, the cause of this problem is down here. And a lot of people will try to solve other problems to try to solve this problem, but not get to the root cause. Now, let me tell you a little story about that. So there's the Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial back in Washington, DC. 
They noticed that it was crumbling so badly that blocks of cement came close to falling on tourists. So they're like, why the heck are the blocks of cement um, falling? Why is the cement crumbling? Why is the cement falling off all around us? And they figured out, oh, it's because we're power washing it too much. And they're like, why the heck are we power washing it so much? Oh, it's because there's birds. There's tons of birds and they were pooping all over the, the uh, Jefferson Memorial. So they said, well, let's solve the problem. Put nits up. And so they basically put bird nits all around the Jefferson Memorial at this time. But then it looked ugly. The birds still came around and the problem was not solved. So they had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what the heck it was. And so they asked the next why. And instead of asking enough whys and getting to the root cause of the problem, they tried to solve them one at a time and wasting all this time and money. So why the heck was there a lot of birds perching on the roof and uh, perching on the roof? And it came to find out that there was a lot of food for the birds, like spiders and insects. So they, okay, let's go get all the insect repellent we need and kill off all the birds, all the insects. Um, and that didn't work. And they're like, what in the world? Why is this going on? So anyway, the spiders came, or so lots of birds were perched on the roof and they were coming down and you ask why, because they were eating all the spiders and the spiders were there to eat the moths. So they were like, what the heck? Why are all these moths showing up? And the large, and they ask why, and the large number of moths accumulate at the memorial during evening and at dusk. And the reason was, is that the floodlights for the Jefferson Memorial were programmed to be turned on 30 minutes earlier than the other mon uh, monument. So the lights came on earlier at the Jefferson mon mo uh, Monument, which attracted all these bugs and uh, all these moths and stuff. And then the spiders came to eat the moths. The birds came to eat the spiders. So the birds were pooping all over the thing, which caused the guys have to power wash it too much, which caused the bricks to fall apart. So once they asked enough whys, they realized, turn the lights off earlier and don't turn them on as soon. And that got rid of the bugs. So when you ask a why problem, when you ask five whys, you can run it backwards too. So we are about to take and get into step three, okay? Where's my book? Did I lose it? I did not close that out, did I? I did. That's okay. I lost one of my pages. So you can ask five whys. Why, 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 why? And you get to the root cause of the problem. And unless you are solving the actual root cause of that problem, you're wasting time and money. And the reason I'm trying to think like this and talk about this, um, there's a psychologist, his name's and Abraham Mosklo. He said, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Without a new way of viewing the world, we will most likely use the same kind of thinking that created so many of our problems in the first place. Focusing only on what we already know can limit our ability to think more broadly. So we have to put the hammer down and realize, hey, there's more tools and there's more problems in life and start retraining our thinking. And so as we come to step three, that says we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Why are we making this decision? We go back to step two, because we came to believe that our, that he could restore us to sanity. Well, why could he believe that he restored us to sanity? Go back to step one, because uh, our lives were unmanageable, or we, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and our lives had become unmanageable. Well, why was our lives unmanageable and why were we powerless to alcohol and drugs? And then you take that back to your drug problem. You look at your life, what your situation looked like, what you were doing with your relationships, finances, work. Were you in jail? Did it lead you into institutions? What, why? Because of the drugs. Oh, the drugs and alcohol are the root cause of the problem. That's what we need to get rid of. So then you get rid of the drugs. You admit you're powerless. You, uh, and your life's unmanageable. You come to believe that a power greater than yourself can restore you to sanity. And now it's step three. It's time that we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we under stand him. Does that make sense? Does any of that make sense? And you can use clear. you can use the five whys in all things in your life. If your driveway is deteriorating, ask why. And if you find the first problem is because there's water getting on it. Ask where's the water coming from? Why? Why is the water? And you run the whys all the way back and there's your root cause. And so we know as addicts, the root cause of our problem is addiction and drug and drugs. And so now we come to the tools of 12 steps to answer that problem, the cure to the solution, the solution to the problem. 
Sweet. Glad, Jennifer. <laughs> it's not why the addiction, it's why the pain. Thank you, Tracy. Good. I'm glad that makes sense. Quite says it makes sense. That only took 20 minutes to get to. Aubrey wants to know how many taxpayer dollars it took to figure out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about the birds and the a spiders. A lot. <laughs> a lot. But it, the thing that gets me is that they, and the thing that gets me is that we can try that in our own lives. We think, oh, the birds are the problem. And you tried it and tried it and tried to fight the birds off. You tried it, you know, to waste all this time and money fighting the birds off when that's not the problem. So that's why you got to get to the root cause of the problem. Because you'll never solve the actual problem if you don't get to the root of the problem. And so if you're looking at the pain in your life, what is the root cause of it? And don't try to solve, you know what I mean? You know what I'm getting at there? All right. So chapter three, page 37 says, our great trouble is that we are trying to make ourselves better. And we can't really do that. We have to have God's help. We have to quit playing God because it hasn't worked. We have to make a decision that hereafter God is going to direct our lives. We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the care of God as we understood him. And that's the decision we're making. Each and every thing we do in our lives is based on a decision. Every action we take is preceded by a, de a decision. Since our lives are action, then the decisions we make is one of the most important principles of a successful life of successful living successful people are successful because of their ability to make decisions making decisions is simply gathering the facts and determining a course of action based on interpretation of those facts as we perceive them we don't know what the results of those decisions will be but we do have a certain pertinent information that we must gather in this 12-step process, the first two steps have given us the information with which to make these decisions. We have seen our alternatives, and we have a choice. We can choose to begin to live our lives on a spiritual basis. And step three is a principle that we should apply not only to our addiction or compulsion, but to all areas of our lives. And that's what made me think of the five whys when I came to that, that sentence. Uh, it says, in this 12-step process, the first two steps have given us the information with which to make this decision. So why are we making this decision to turn our will and our lives, your will and your lives over to God? What is your will and what is your lives? What's the difference? I'm trying to invite my mates in here. Sweet. Bring them. I like what this the more is, the merrier. says about, uh, this is the al -Anon book about making that commitment. It says, all we need to do is make a decision. You reap what you sow. By making such a commitment, we stop setting ourselves up for failure. We have known in the past when we've tried to manipulate people and events that we were beyond our control. Instead, we make a decision to turn it over. I like it. Quit setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. That's what you do. And if you're if you're trying to solve the wrong problem with the wrong tool, you're setting yourself up for failure. Instead, you just turn it over. And we have come to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity. Well, if you've come to believe that a power greater than yourself can restore you to sanity, and your sanity is being the opposite of your insanity, which was your addiction then it's time to make a decision. This is de this is decision-making time. The first two are hope steps. This is an action step. You're making a decision now. You're turning your will and your life over to God as you understand him. And it's not an easy one. It's a daily thing. It's one of those things like, how long did it take you to become an addict? You didn't wake up one day just slamming ball and grams of uh, heroin. You didn't wake up sniffing gaggers of meth. And you didn't wake up one day drinking 15 to 20 to 40 beers or fits a whiskey like in my case you gradually got there and now i think james was hitting on this in his show earlier we want instant gratification and i want that with everything as soon if i see a truck i want to go buy it and have it today i don't want to wait i don't like that's why i don't like ordering things online i hate waiting two to three days to get it but our recovery is the same way 
we have to understand that it's going to be one day, one minute at a time. We wake up, we turn our will and our lives over to God. We leave the house at 7 a.m. and by 7.30, we've already failed. You stop, you take your inventory, you pray, and you turn your will and your life back over to God. That's the character defect inventory that we're going to take right now. So think about your day. How are you impatient today? Look back over and think about it. And today, how I was impatient was with my kids as usual. Today was our day off, so we didn't really get out too much. But I'm impatient when they don't do the things that they're told to do. So when you take your inventory, think about it like this. Use one for mild, two for moderate, and three for severe. And use a zero for none, which means you, pr you practice the asset. Okay, so if impatience was mild, impatience would be one for me today. But maybe you had an incident in your life today where number three is what you would want to put down as severe. But if you encountered a situation where you thought, mm, time to be patient, you put a zero because you practice the character asset. And then you can tally up these numbers and you can see your score. And you want to watch your score fluctuate. And obviously, it's like golf. You want the lower scores. But be honest. Don't fudge the numbers. So impatience, did you score a one, two, or three? Procrastination, I would probably put moderate on mine. I would probably put a two on that one. Let me, let me write this down. So impatience was a one for me. Procrastination was a two. Laziness was a two. And how was I lazy today? I could have been more vigorous. I, so we got up to clean the yard, and we did that. We, we took a, a load to the dump, and instead of coming home and getting right back to work and busting out the lawnmower. I lounged around and, and, sl and went slowly about my day. So uh, laziness could have been too. Uh, criticizing. I did have some conversations earlier where I was criticizing people. So I would put two on that one. False pride. Um, I'm going to put zero because I practiced humility in that today and some of the things that I went through. And then self-importance. Hmm, that one's a tough one. How was I more important than what was going on? And so you really think through these throughout your day. Take every situation, anything you crossed today, and you think, how was I self-important? Or did you practice the asset of modesty? Uh, and then self-condemnation, I'm going to put one, one. Dishonesty, I'm going to put zero. Insincerity, I'm going to put zero because I practice sincerity today. Uh, self justification I've already thought through these. Um, is why I'm going fast. But as you go through these, you want to take it a little slower and actually think about your day. Really think about it. Um, Self-justification, definitely mild. Uh, I justified why I was sitting around and not out doing or having the kids do something I could have helped more with. Self-pity, definitely zero. Uh, jealousy, zero. Envy, definitely a one. I definitely, every day, is envy is a tough one for me. I see what other people's have and I want it. Other people's haves. Other people, what other people have, and I want it, and that's envy. Vulgar, immoral thinking. I told some jokes today that were vulgar, so that's a one. Destructive anger, zero. I actually had constructive anger. I actually didn't get angry yet today. Not yet. Don't test me. Resentment or forgiveness. Um, I'm still living mildly in resentment. And then negative thinking. I definitely had some negative thinking, like I'm never going to make it kind of a thing, but it was mild. So then I tally up my points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So my daily points would be 14. So tomorrow I want to shoot for 13, but tomorrow I could end up with 18. You know, it's progress, not perfection. But this keeps your character defects at the front of your mind. So that's taking your inventory. So back to decision making in step three. There are a, there may be a lot of variables in quality of our decision making. There's a lot of variables in the quality of our decision making. For instance, many people make the mistake of not gathering all the information that they need and so make hasty decisions. Now, I love that it says that in here, and I'm actually going to highlight that right now. And if you have the book and you're following along, highlight this sentence. For instance, many people many people 
What? Many people. Hi, make, Antonio. Uh, many people make the mistake of not gathering all the information necessary, all the information they need, and so make a hasty decision. Okay. Now I want you to pause on this one and put, and right next to it, put step one and step two. Step one and step one, and more, more importantly than step two at this juncture, have you gathered all the information necessary to prove you are an alcoholic or an addict? Have you done a thorough step one or are, did you make too much of a hasty decision and jump to two? And now are you making another hasty decision jump into three? Because when you make a decision to turn your will and your life over to God, you have to understand why you're making that decision because he can care for us our will wasn't getting it done, right? Focus, like what this quote says, Abraham Maslow says, if you have a hammer and everything looks like a nail, without a new way of viewing the world, we will most likely use the same kind of thinking that created so many of our problems. So if you've, just like the in your past life, in your past life, just like in your past, have you hastily made decisions through these steps instead of honestly putting the hard work into it because we didn't become alcoholics and addicts overnight and we got to put the same energy into our addiction or into our recovery as we did our addiction. And it's a long process. So if you do that, the possibilities is that you'll make bad decisions. Many people make mistakes by rounding up all the information. Oh, and here's another one with the mistake of rounding up all the information, but then because they're afraid that they'll make a mistake, waiting a long time to make sure that they are ready, what can happen with these people is that some of the facts change and they make the decisions based on old information and that gets them into trouble. First lady, Antonio. Lynn B's not lazy. If I was lazy, I wouldn't exercise for hours every day, but I definitely am guilty of most of the other character defects. Yeah, that's one out of 16 you got a zero on. Anybody kind of tally those numbers in their mind or on, on a piece of paper? And what do you think it, uh, what did it look like? It took me 16 years until I acted on my additions. Now I'm 23 years sober. I'm nice. July 20th this year, 23 years sober. Good job. I am definitely adding this to my number tool list. Hashtag tool list. 100% having tools to address all situations, knowing how to use the tools can make or break a reaper. Yeah, absolutely, Dwight. Now that's now with Dwight's comment right there, that's a guy who has his head in recovery. Either your head's in recovery or it's in relapse. And right with that comment right there, you can tell we'll tell where Dwight's head is in recovery. You have to be honest with yourself when you do personal inventory. Absolutely. How it works. Anybody quote how it works? Rigorous honesty. Those who fail are incapable of being honest. Ah, man, I wish you were here locally too, man. That would be awesome. You'd love Utah. You'd love the mountains. And if you're a hunter, you'd love the hunting, the duck hunting. If you're a skier, snowboarder, you'd love skiing and snowboarding. If you like little lakes and rivers, you'd love that. If you like a little downtown scenery, we got that. And this place has everything. Antonio says, I've only been drinking for four years, so I'm still wet behind the ears. Only been four years. That's a long time, man. Tally up all that. Tally up how much alcohol you've drank in four years and then add, put a number of uh, money value on it too. All right. To start on step three, I believe that through the care of God, I think I would have been able to get back to my focus on my life and what I need to do. Turn your will and your life over to God. You know what I mean? So we're turning our will and our life over to God. We're not turning our will and our life back over to us because we're the ones that got us in the situation we were in. Thanks, Unc. Yeah, what Murd said. Great job on your sobriety. You're welcome, Aubrey. Thanks, brother. I'm a little flabby around the edges, but I'm pretty solid after that. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to meet you too, brother. If we're close, man, and sky's the limit. Everything's possible. Utah's a great place. It's beautiful. The depth of your honesty is the depth of your healing. That is so true. 
and your your willingness to go and do it, right? Mm -hmm. So I never did like the 12 steps of Al-Anon, but as we go through the steps, I subconsciously, through other counseling, did the 12 steps of Al-Anon. Now you love them. <laughs> and the third step is like the most freeing step for someone who loves an addict. Because at that point, you're like, okay, I'm not in control. I can't make them do what I want. My life and their life is in God's hands or a power greater than myself's hands. And you just let it go. Mm, and step one, yeah. all of a sudden, you don't have the weight of the world and somebody else's addiction mm -hmm. on your shoulders anymore. And I think that's when that was the whole turning point in in my my growth, I guess. Mm -hmm. Step three was the best one. I could see how that'd be freeing. You got the weight of the addict on your shoulders, and it's with the addict. The weight addict has the weight of his own addiction on his shoulders, and you give it to God. <gasps> oh, I can finally breathe. Yeah, you realize it's not your fault. They're an addict, no matter how much sometimes they say it is. You realize there's nothing you can do that can make them quit, and you leave it to God to work on their heart. Amen. And the third step prayer says, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as you will. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do your will. Take away my difficulties. The victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. Amen. Amen. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those who I could help. I love that. I like it. Cat, he's on page 39. 39. One more thing. Oh, I think you're fine. Thank you, brother. <laughs> One of our family members, Jenny Lynn, lost her bell. Oh, man. Oh, what? Already? I thought. No, that was a different That's person. the same exact name that Michael Teeter just told us. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is. Oh, man, that's heartbreaking. That is sad. So, Petey, you know Michael Teeter, I take it? Because you guys just came on here talking about the same baby, but two different views. That's sad. Dang it. Antonio says, my AA in real life opened today, and it was so depressing. Blah. <laughs> Why? What was depressing about it? Night, James. Thanks for coming in, what guys. What is the same or, name? Hmm. Update us on the story. What happened? What? I said I need details. I know, me too. <laughs> it was like five five minutes apart. Dang. Antonio says link. Good night, James. What's up, Antonio? So decision making, uh, Catherine, we Catherine, we are on paragraph four. One, two, three, four. So decision making is a little like rocket science. Windows of opportunity occur which are dangerous to miss. Spacecraft have been launched with precise timing. They have to be launched with precise timing or they will miss their targets. It's likewise vital for us to make our decisions when they are timely. That is, after we have gathered enough information, but not after having waited timely for so long that the opportunity has passed. And man, the more I get into this literature and the more I start reading these, the, re the more I realize how amazing the counselor I had was in my IOP because he gave us that quote in a different way. Because he was like, I don't want you to hurry through your steps, and I don't want you to wait too long going through your steps. He goes, if you hurry through them, you're making hasty decisions like we just covered, not getting the most out of it. And if you haven't gathered the information necessary for step one, and that's like the golf shot. It's like you're driving that golf ball off the tee box is step one, and the rest follows, right? So if you haven't gathered enough, but if you sit and linger, la di da -di, too long, by the time you finish step two, you've already grown past it, you know? So it's it's 
important to understand your recovery where you're at and just march to that drum of you just pick get this rhythm of your recovery and let it just continue to compound and get better and get better and get better and stay with it and look out for all the triggers you got to get your sword and your shield out because you're at, like james said on his channel earlier you are literally at war with the addict in your mind and as soon as you put your guard down you're going to get his knife right in your back because your addict don't care your addict will kill you he will he will kill you and that is the sin nature in every one of us that we're born with trying to destroy us Yeah, PD, we we're praying for you for sure. I had to struggle about the will of God and I found it. Whatever is in front of you that needs to be atoned, attended to in, the, in all areas of life. Amen. John's still fighting demons to overcome problems with being an alcoholic, but I go day by day and thank God for my blessings. Amen. Me too, man. Me too, day by day. I had some cravings today. We were on our way to the dump and I didn't say it out loud. I should have probably. But what were we talking about? We were on just about cresting that hill. And I was like, let's go do that. I can't remember. The kids said they wanted to go do something, and it made me like, hmm, yeah, I want to drink. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Oh, man, what's going on, brother? Oh, I think it was like Zeppies or something. No, it was after mm. that. She went to the hospital because she wasn't feeling the baby move, so they did a C-section. All I know for somebody posted it on Facebook. Well, we heard the baby lived, so please don't don't let this show end without us knowing. <laughs> yeah, Teeter, give us an update. If Michael Teeter, if you're still on here, because Teeter said the baby came out all healthy, bro. Let me show you. Oh, we said five pounds something. He was all excited. I'll go back to the comment. Hold on. It's like, yeah, it was towards the top. I was all the way at the top right there a second ago. Huh. I think you've gone too far. I have gone too far this time. Oh, it only lets me go to there. Never mind. It was above that. That's as far as it lets me go. Hmm. Oh, weird. I guess there's a limit. Crazy. Link, what's your yep, cash right app? Um, Here, I'll repost it at the bottom. This is cash app. You need to get one of these. Oh, he's on. Oh. Oh. It's green, Dad. There you go. You don't have to make sound. Effects. Link, what's your cash app? <laughs> you need a cash app. You need a cash app, man. Look, you, there's this. I found it. So proud of you for leaving the situation. Oh, days. So, uh, Petey, that's what Michael Teeter said right there. Jerry Sigma, welcome. Hey, Jerry. Thanks for uh, showing up. If this is your first time here, uh, this is a channel about recovery from alcohol and addiction and drug addiction. We're here to help the, and support the still suffering, the newbies, and anybody looking for relapse prevention. And it's on the Al-Anon side and on the addict and addiction side like me. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you're on Facebook, please follow the page. And don't forget to hit that like button. We're all talking about getting me PTSD dog. Hopefully all this will end soon so I can look into the VA. Good. That would be good for you, brother. PTS is not a bit. It's funny because I never, I always heard the term PTS. I say PTS because I don't like the D. It's the disorder. It's not a disorder. You had a post-traumatic stress event. Situation. And, and now your mind, you don't have a disorder. You were, you lived through, through something that gave you post-traumatic stress. And that's the way I look at it. But I always knew it and I knew it was there and I heard about guys that had it. But then I experienced it for myself after his accident. I definitely have that too. After seeing him in the condition he was, it just the whole event, everything around it and all the, you know, the nightmares, the, the jolts in the car when like thoughts emerge in your mind and just, yeah, I get it, bro. What kind of dog? Uh, we were just talking about the crash earlier out there today. You were? With Andy. Me and Miss Andy. We talked about the crash earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So grateful there are no trolls in here. Me too. Aubrey, if you haven't joined our private Facebook group, I'm, I can't remember if you did or not, um, 
read the rules to my private Facebook group. I'm all about kicking trolls, man. I hate them. I was in, and the reason I started that private Facebook group is because I was in a few groups and people were posting stuff like literally trying to trigger people. And I'm like, why in the world? And people are commenting like, I'm only two days clean. I don't need to see this. And so I was like, ah. there's a link. CDC Hi, Joe. Has now put Love you. Social distancing guidelines for pets. Because hmm. tigers can get it. <laughs> What's up, Joseph? And we're all going to get the get it from the tigers. All right. Page 40. So step one and step two have prepared us, like I'd just been preaching there for a little bit. We have gathered all the needed information through these two steps. We are now ready for a decision. And there is no need to procrastinate. That's a character defect, remember? Our window of opportunity is open. And the big book says on page 61, a life run on self-will can hardly be a success. On that basis, we are almost always in collusion with something or somebody, collision with something or somebody. Even though our motives are good, most people try to live by self-propulsion. Each person is like an actor who wants to run the whole show, is forever trying to arrange the lights, the ballet, the scenery, and the rest of the players in his own way. So what is self-will? Look, oh yeah. Thanks, Polly. Thanks, Antonio. I don't know what my cash app is. Let me find out. Here's my cash app. LT's got cash app. Um, thanks, Antonio. Uh it's right there. Just type it in there. Um so while you're thinking about what I just asked, and I forgot what I just asked. Oh, self-will. Think about your self-will and your addiction. So think about that for a minute. And while you're thinking about that, we are going to hear from Cassie's motivational tips of the day. Hey guys, happy Friday. I'm back with your motivational quote here on Recovering Addicts. Your life is a gift God gave to you. What you do with it is your gift to God. Anonymous. As always, you guys know what to do. Bring it together. Let's continue to spread that love. That is a good one. Millie, come here. God's gift to you is life. So your life can be a gift back to God. That's true. Oh. oh. What happened? What did I miss? I said I was going to go to drink. Two. You're going to go drink? No, I was gonna get a drink of water. Oh, <laughs> two tours to Afghanistan. I wonder if it, if it, yeah, brother. I work up. You got you guys know where I work, right? So I'm around the military all the time, and I got some friends up there who have seen some things. Man, I know. Well, I don't know how bad it was for you in particular, but I understand what they're going through. And I got a little taste of that by experiencing this guy dying in my arms. So. I think a dog could probably help, man. And they're trained for that. It's pretty amazing that the dogs can wake you up out of scary dreams and mm -hmm. see that you're in distress and you just you're not in your right frame of mind and come and try to pull you out of it. It's pretty awesome that dogs can be taught to do that. Wow. Blows my mind. Oh, cool. Yeah, no trolls, Aubrey. No trolls on the Facebook group. <laughs> I've had to ban five people so far. <laughs> Alicia, she's, she experiences it with her son-in-law. All right, self-will. What is self-will? This is a very important question. I think the key to being able to do it, to do an inventory in step four is our ability to understand the meaning of will in step three. That's the heart of the inventory. Ooh, that's deep. So basically, when you go to step four, go back and do another step three with all that in mind. Because look what your self-will got you. When you go to step four, what is the what is step four? Made a searching and fearless moral, made a fearless and searching moral inventory. You're going to the deepest, darkest parts of your heart and being honest about it and writing it down. And that's what self-will is. Now go back to step three and be like, yeah, that's not good. Let's turn my life and will over to God. To the care of God. To the care of God means there's a caring God. There are only two kinds of will on the face of this earth. In other words, there are only two forms of intelligence. 
These are human will, the will of men and women, and the will of God. No other animal or thing on earth has this will. We are the only animals that can think and make decisions. This is both our freedom and our curse. There's a story in the Bible that tells us how all this conflict began. The Garden of Eden. A story a Story is the story of the beginning of self-will and how we got it. In the beginning, when God created the earth, he made the sun, the trees, and the animals. We don't even know how to get, they, they don't even know how to get into trouble. All these things were, and all these things and are God directed. And God said, said, since he had made these things, he would care for them. But God got lonesome in this kind of a world, and he wanted something else, something with will, something with intelligence. He decided to make human beings. He gave us intelligence. So he would have something else in this whole scheme that was like him, someone he could communicate with. And the Bible says that we are God-like. We are made in his image. We probably don't look like God, but we are God-like because we have will. So he created Adam and Eve, and he put them in the Serenity Park. <laughs> he calls the Serenity Park. <laughs> That's funny. I want to go there. It was a great place. They had it made. They were living there with a lot of dumb animals, and they were the new living and didn't know anything about self-will. God ran the whole show. The rest of the animals went along with the program, so Adam and Eve did too. And they didn't know any better, and everything was going along just fine. They didn't use self-will. They didn't know anything about it. One day a snake came up to Eve and said, Hey, Eve, what are you and Adam going to do, going along for? You got self-will. You don't have to be just like these dumb animals. Eve had never heard such a thing. What is this? The snake ran down to her and said, You can do whatever you want. You don't have to listen to him. And Eve said, Well, I didn't know that. And he said, Well, you got it. I have to go along with this stuff, but you don't. She couldn't wait. She ran to tell Adam. Adam, Adam, we've got self-will. And he probably said, what in the world is that? So she explained it to him. You mean we can eat that apple? He said, yeah, she said. We can do anything we want to do. And Adam made a decision to eat the apple, and it was a bad decision. But remember, it was the first decision he had ever made, so they ate the apple. When God came along, he probably said, uh-oh, they found out about it, and now they know what we've got, what they've got. He wasn't surprised, but he kicked them out of the garden because he told them, if you are going to direct your own lives, exercise self-will and make your own decisions, you're going to have to take care of yourselves. But if you get into trouble directing your own lives and you want to turn your will and your lives back over to me, let me know and I'll take care of you again. It's up to you. It won't take your will away from you. You'll have to surrender it to me of your own choice. And then Bill Wilson defined self-will very well when he wrote about it in the 12 steps in the 12 traditions. Anything I need to answer? Just step three looks good and step four sounds life-changing. Yeah. Tanya's yeah. looking for a sponsor. Oh, Tanya. So that sponsor thing, if you haven't joined our private Facebook group, join that group. And in there, people have... Uh, thrown in con I'll, I'll put another question out of digital sponsors and then I'll make sure I pin this one to the top of the chat and people have agreed that they would be the online digital sponsors right now and I think it'd be a good thing you can't have too many people helping you stay sober snake is insanity yes true that. I like that self will is something we surrender over and over again in our recovery yeah Exactly. If we chase our desires, did we get it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it works. Oh, there you go, Tanya. <gasps> Dang. Lauren Clark. Thank you. That's for Linky. Antonio, thank you both. We love you. Those marks. Antonio, thank you. We'll make sure Link gets that. You see that, Linky? <laughs> what is it? Tell Antonio, thank you. Whoa. Thanks, Antonio. Ant yeah. No, not Lorna. Thanks, Antonio. Antonio Givens be Givens. 
<laughs> don't be a giver. I mean, don't be a taker. Be a giver. Be a given. He cool. said, get whatever you want, bro. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, man. Except for drugs and alcohol. He's no probably going to get take fives or Kit Kats. What else do you usually get? Oh, like a game. A game? Yeah. Oh, he does. He has been wanting a board game for the family to play together. Oh, I actually have one up in the cupboard. That is awesome, Antonio. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, look out for tonight after we end this show. Um, I will get on Facebook. I will post the question. Online sponsors, comment below. I'll pin it to the top. Um, give it a, a night or a day and just keep your eye on that. And then reach out to them. Give them, you know, hit them up on their slide into their DMs. <laughs> and we'll pick <laughs> better. What? You're too old to say DMs. I like saying DMs. <laughs> Slide in there. <laughs> I feel like that the ladies from the Golden Girls would say DMs. They'd try. For sure they would try. Petey says, I'm going to send some pictures to your Facebook page. That's all that I know about. Awesome. All about, is this about the baby? Oh, Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Love you too. Thanks for oh, coming. If you're leaving, thanks for in my coming. Eye. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. Throw out some hearts. Let's help the team family grow. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Thank you, Merck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you. thanks. DMs are direct. Do I have one? <laughs> <laughs> it's a direct message. <laughs> you don't have a Merck. <laughs> They're only for the young kids. That's funny. Good night, sweet dreams, John. Thanks for being here. Uh, I got a question. Who is it that? Oh, go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, we have 34 viewers and only 14 likes. We need 20 more likes. Smash that like button. Whoa. Ooh. Dang. Link said it. <laughs> snakes and ladders. That's a good game. Mm, that is a good one. Watch out for the snakes. She's getting old school on us. Who was it that was asking about the I Heart a Recovering Addict t-shirt? I can't remember. Uh, Veronica, I think. I thought. You thunk? I thunk it did. <laughs> I guess she didn't know what DMs were either. <laughs> Me neither. For I didn't a really either. Long I had time. to learn and now I think Cause, I'm cool. Because we're old. <laughs> So Jacqueline, Patreon is a way that you could support this channel if you want to. Not no pressure, no nothing. Like I said, I'm never gonna try to I'll, Cat. if it's asked about, I'll throw it out there. And I appreciate Merck doing that and stuff. But I'm gonna if God wants to grow this channel, I mean, by all means. It's up to God. Cat, I, I'm working on a I'm working on a design. That's gonna be my next one. Was it? And yours is, should be on its oh, way today. Oh, it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Fleece has been working on that design. It's awesome. I think it's looking pretty good. I can't. Okay. Red lettering with a. Well, no, we'd have to pull up the pictures. That's true. She can't visualize what you're trying to spit. She I'm thinking white letters with red sip. heart. I just recently learned. What? I don't get it. What DMs are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Alicia would be an awesome digital sponsor. She's got some sobriety under her belt. She's got some knowledge under her belt. You guys can catch her tomorrow night on Sober James's channel. She's going to be uh, spilling her story. Now we don't. We have a friend in town that does Aubrey that does all our shirts. Does he want it to say "I love a recovering addict" or "my recovering addict"? I got two different things here. There's always an answer to I my problems when I apply the spiritual principles. For the people in my life. who love their recovery addicts but aren't related to them. It's my ego that keeps getting in the way. I guess that's why recovery is life. Yay, man. The battle never quits, man. We can that it's always in here, always in our heart and in our mind. That battle. That's where the true battle lies, man. It's not on the outside, it's all inside. I have a joke. Joke of the day. I dropped my waffle in the sand. I guess you could call it a San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
San Diego. To San Diego. <laughs> Lego my ego. Good one, Lanky. Thank you. A recovering addict. You got it. So there's three basic instincts that in life that separate us from lower animals. Hmm, wow. I want to study that one before I just start reading it so I can have some other things to do. But let's recap what we talked about tonight. If you all didn't remember, if you all need a little recapage, we went through our inventory, and that's something we're going to do every night at 8.30 on the dot. We'll stop whatever we're doing at 8.30 on the dot and uh, do our inventory. But remember the five whys. Why was the uh, Jefferson Memorial cracking? Because they left the lights on, oh. and it took why. And whatever the first answer is, ask why again. And whatever the next answer is, ask why until you can't ask why anymore and you found the root cause of your problem. We're on step three. We're about to make a decision because we are we just came to believe, right, that a power greater than ourselves can restore us to sanity. Why do we believe that? Because – we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. Well, why? Because we took a step one and proved it to ourselves by looking at our lives and how it was actually unmanageable. What was unmanageable in our lives? Our finances, our relationships, our work. We ended up in jail. We ended up in the hospital. Why? Because I did all these drugs. And then you can keep going further back. Why? Why were you doing all these drugs? Why were you doing this? Oh, I had this tragedy in life. Oh, so there's this tragedy that's caused pain that you're trying to solve a problem of with drugs and alcohol. Now let's process this tragedy tragedy, with a counselor, with a pastor, with a doctor, and learn how to deal with this tragedy because things in the past have happened. We can't go back and change them. Learn how to deal with this tragedy and get better. And then you won't have to do all that. And then we're at step three, and we're going to make this decision. We're going to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him. And so tomorrow, I will go through these three instincts of human. I will talk about what it looks like to turn your will and your life over to God. And it's going to be an awesome show. And then Sunday, tomorrow's Saturday, right? Sunday, Sunday, and Sunday. And then Sunday, we have special guests um, at 8 o'clock. They are uh, more on Facebook, I believe, but they're cool. They're another couple that does uh, online recovery, and I think it'd be awesome to add them to our family. I just thought of something. She said either one they'll purchase. I'm gonna do my because it's Ari says my. Yep, right. my. I say I told her. Eh? He knew he was reading your mind. There's my pride right there. Mm. I just thought my pride and my ego. I wouldn't have questioned it, but she put uh, <laughs> so oh. then I was all sorts of confused. <laughs> May I add something to you? You're right? welcome, Dwight. May and I, Tracy? May I add something to the recap? Okay. Um, so if you had a tragedy in your life, and you're trying to fix a drug and alcohol, you're just making it worse. Yeah, if you had a tragedy in life and you're trying to fix it with drugs and alcohol, you've just made that tragedy worse. That is just like logic 101, plain and simple. <laughs> That's what I like about Linky. Yeah. It's just <laughs> no need to go blunt. deeper than that. <laughs> Good night, Dwight. Have a good night. Sleep good. Oh, hi, Chad. Have a good night. Chad, what's up, brother? <laughs> what is up, brother? That was weird today, man. I popped into that Zoom meeting. I remembered. I looked at the clock. I was like, oh, crap. Courage to change. And jumped in there. It was all. <laughs> I was the only one in there with a bird. <laughs> but I guess action had other things to do. Mm. Amen, Linky. Good night to you too. All right, let's read. I'm 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 going towards my uh I can't find my phone, so there it is. <laughs> Found, it. Found it. We will look at NA just for today. Self-worth and service. Being involved in service makes us feel worthwhile. Oh, it does. So true. No, nah, it's all good, brother. No worries. You didn't know I was going to be late. Uh, so being involved in service makes you feel worthwhile. When most of us arrived in Narcotics Anonymous, we had very little self-worth left to salvage. Many members say that they began to develop self-esteem through being of service early in their recovery. Something just short of a miracle occurs when we be... Be? 
Well, yeah, there's this typo in this. Begin. Begin. Uh, most of us don't have a lot of experience or strength or hope to share at 30 days clean. In fact, some members will tell us in no uncertain terms that what we can do best is listen. But at 30 days, we do offer something that to the addict that's just coming into the rooms of NA, struggling to get 24 hours clean. The very newest NA member, the one with only the desire to stop using and none of the tools, can hardly imagine anyone staying clean for a year or two years or 10. But he or she can relate to those people with 30 days clean, picking up a key tag with a look of pride and disbelief and basled on their faces. Service is something that is our unique gift, something that no one can take away from us. We give and we get. Through service, many of us start on the, on the sometimes long road back to becoming productive members of society. So just for today, I will be grateful for the opportunity to be of service. Amen. Amen. It's so true. And I keep, ah, I keep meaning to pull up that one quote. All right, you talk for a second. I want to pull up this quote because I think it's important about service. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I also like monster trucks. Uh, okay. Grave digger. Yeah. We used to take the kids to go see monster trucks all the time. They loved it. We haven't taken Millie to go see monster trucks. All the cool things the kids got to do, the boys anyways. Millie doesn't get to do those things. She's She missed there, out. Now there's COVID. Yeah. Plus there's the sickness going around. Glad things are starting to open back up again. That's pretty nice. Good night. Good night. I keep trying to use mine to control the thing, but it don't work. <laughs> You're trying to get to a comment? Uh, I was just going to click on him. I'm almost there. I know exactly where it is. His name's Ram Das. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So this guy says, I invite you when you are caught in your stuff and in your heart and your heart is closed to reach out, find someone else who is suffering, to be there for them for that moment. He says, what I find when my heart is closed is that the purity of their heart pulls me out of myself very quickly. For those of you who have gotten caught in individualism and separation, the act of serving another human being is a doorway back into your connection to the universe. The real need pulls you out of yourself. And I think about it all the time when it's service, when I'm down on myself and you're in that, in your character defects of uh, self-condemnation and self-pity, reach out and help somebody because it takes you, your mind out of your darkness and puts it in a positive light on somebody else. So think about that. When you're feeling self-pity, you're depressed, go help somebody. Get your Get out of your head. It pulls you out of your head. And then together, boom, you know what I mean? And that's what our community is. Look at us as a bridge to find a place. If you need to find a place, jump on Facebook, go to our private group. Anybody need to talk, I'm here, you know, or just find somebody in there that looks like they were struggling in the comments and reach out. I noticed we had one comment and the comment was kind of weirdly placed. So I'm not sure about the comment yet, but somebody was like, this group sucks. I've tried to reach out, but I don't know. I'll have to figure that one out. Yeah. Petey was Petey responded to it though. Corey, what's up, brother? Corey in the house. Oh, we made a little <laughs> card saying that we love her. Yeah. Just we love out of the blue. They made the old lady next door some I love you cards and gave it to her. We will grab my other battery. Super sweet. Always gonna have haters. Yeah. I haters know. gonna hate. But it's a, an opportunity for us to practice the character defect of criticism because we don't have to instantly criticize that person. We can turn around and you know, think positively and do good. How you doing, Corey? I heard from you for a minute. The last thing you sent me was a song. Pretty cool. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> 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 right on, brother. <laughs> oh, all right. Any questions? We it's uh it's uh, Friday night. We don't have to go anywhere for another hour or two. Or three or four or five. I don't care. We'll stay up. We'll pull an all-nighter without alcohol oh, and drugs. We're doing an all-nighter. We're pulling all-nighter. 
I ain't scared. He's scared. Anything anybody want to talk about? Anything anybody want to research and talk about? Any mm -hmm. burning desires? Any burning desires? Anybody want to come on the show and say what's up? Oh, yeah. I want to hear from somebody. I want a guest. If anybody wants to come on the show live with us right now, Link you let you me know and I'll throw a comment or I'll throw a thing in the comments. Link wants to be on the show. You can pop in. So you're on the show, silly Billy. What Antonio say? Something. Don't forget to join the Discord. Yeah, I have a Discord too, y'all. If you don't do Facebook, that's a good place to be. Oh, don't forget tomorrow at three, I will be having Zoom. Zoom at three o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And it's no joke. We get down and dirty and talk about recovery. And I'll be having a reverse flash. Whoa. You're going to be having a reverse flash. We get in your head. Yeah. It's time That's to get it. Zoom. Three o'clock. It's time for us to express oh. our emotion that we're feeling of the day and express exactly where we're headed hard as at in recovery. If we need help, it's time to talk. Say it out loud. And there's going to be enough wisdom in that group. If I don't have the answer, if Merck doesn't have the answer, somebody in there will have the answer. You know what I'm saying? Somebody will have experienced something you're going through and be able to help talk you through it. Ooh, speaking of wisdom. It's a great place. God, speaking of wisdom, uh, my teacher at Capstone says I'm very wise. And I should write <laughs> fortune cookies. <laughs> Look at Merck, he's rhyming on us. What'd you say? Um, so my teacher at Capstone, Mr. Wilson, said I was very wise and I should write fortune cookies. Oh. That's a good idea. I just don't click the idea. link. Don't think. Click the link. Click. Antonio says he's missing in his life is prayer. Prayer works, man. People underestimate that power. Pray every day. Power of prayer. Pray Had a couple day. not as good days, but grandma made my day today. Good. Good. Ooh. This too shall pass, right? We made a grandma's day today. Yeah, you did. You yeah, just that was really it. cool. Proud of you guys. Thanks. Up the courage. Me too. I do the same thing, Aubrey. <laughs> Me and Aubrey have a lot in common. I could feel it. <laughs> that was funny. Well, why she put? Huh? Trying to find a way to pray. Close your eyes and just say whatever's on your heart out loud, brother. And end it with, let it be true. Okay. You'll see. I went to screenshots true. to Jenny Lynn Page for a recovering addict messenger. This is all I know about. Let me look, bro. I'll check right now. Yeah. Super curious. And uh, Mr. Teeter seems to have disappeared. Yeah, this makes me wonder. But he did have to work. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, her? Oh, man. Well, put that on the prayer list. What happened? Yeah, that doesn't sound very hopeful. Well, I don't want to say it out loud, but just everybody keep her in your prayers. Man, I'm sorry. You know what, Merck? I was watching that show, Mr. Rogers, <clears throat> and about praying. And I always have, we have a prayer list, right? And and I love the way that it's okay, Mr. Rogers, whatever, I get it. But, Mr. Rogers uh, is awesome. Um, Don't hate. It showed him at the edge of his bed praying for people in his life. And he didn't say their name and then just start rattling off about this, help, help him with that, do this for him. He had a list of people who he was praying for, and he just said their name out loud. He just went right through the list. Mark, Frank, John, Betty. Because he knows God knows, but he's praying for them. And I thought that was kind of a cool way, if you don't know what to say or pray, have a list of people you know, like take everybody's name down that's in this chat. You don't have to say anything deep or special. Just when you're on your knees, throw it up to God. Because God only knows. And like Mark says, never mind who, just do it. Oh, how's the song go? God only knows. What you going to do? Financial boosters. Amen. <laughs> Link. You guys. Uh, she did appreciate that. She's old too, man. This lady, and she's her mind. She's still all there. She's Mill close to a hundred. Millie came back and said, "Well, she's not dead." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm, "Is that why you went over there?" <laughs> <laughs> it is scary, Aubrey. There's not many people, Aubrey. I bet you could say the same thing when you're in the party days. 
there was maybe out of 50 people, maybe one or two could keep up with me. And I don't mean as quantity. Uh, it was obviously quantity as well, but just in being nuts and having fun. My kind of fun. I scared most people. Yeah, what do you got to lose, bro? I wish Sean was on here. He had a good point about praying. And all we're doing is taking that rambling that we have in our head all anyway and directing it into a different different area, kind of in my opinion. Because we sit and think and contemplate and chew on things. And when you pray, it's a, it's a form of meditation. You're you're capturing and taking control of your mind and your thoughts and you're making them think, making your thoughts think what you want them to think and then to point them, just point them that way. <laughs> Pray that our loved ones are going to heaven. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Rogers, beautiful day in the neighborhood. What a great guy. What an inspiration that guy was. It's a beautiful I'd love, I, after watching that, I was like sincerely moved and was trying to be more sincere because insincerity is a character defect we've learned, right? And to be at work and listening to somebody talk to you that you don't want to talk to and you're insincere in that conversation after after having watched Mr. Rogers, I was trying to be more sincere with people and not be a conversational narcissist. And that's when you're taking control of the conversation. All you want to do is talk about you. Talk. You're the only one talking. And anytime they try to comment or say anything, you just spin it back to about you. But to actually listen to what they're saying and then ask questions about what they're saying to can help further that conversation about them. Try that. I've been trying that a lot lately. Us addicts, us people, we love talking about ourselves. <laughs> the new emoji. <laughs> <laughs> the heart huggy thing. It means that he loves to hug the heart. It means I love, I, yeah, I don't know. I call it the heart huggy thing. <laughs> it's a love, uh, giving you a love hug or something. I don't know. I don't know what its difference is between the heart and the hug heart. But it's a I, little bit more love. Just but I do a like bit the hug more. heart better. It feels more personal. Yeah. People are afraid of me when they newcomers ask for my advice. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, fist fights, huh? I get there. No, you don't. You're too old. You're like, my knees, well, my knees. I would get to the point and then blame it on my <laughs> knees. <laughs> yep. I agree, Mark. He was awesome. That was a good, good show. <laughs> Snapchat God. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that, Aaron, that's awesome. That is hilarious. <clears throat> Jeez, that was funny. I heard if you bend your knees and you don't have to bend your arms for the drink. Ah, that's cool. That's a cool little analogy. Bend your knees and don't bend your arms in the drink. That's cool. I like that. That's why I sent it that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I just saw it because my phone was acting crazy at this time. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. I wish now we got to reach out. We'll reach out. We will reach out. Reach Make out. Impressions of Igor from the Young and Free. <laughs> Do it. I don't know. Go like this. <laughs> Lead with your bad eye. Your bad eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put a hump Eagle. on your back. <laughs> Let me get a hump there for you. Ready? Oh, this way. How's that? Oh, that's funny. The memories we make, man. The memories we make. I did too, Murd. I watched Mr. Rogers a lot. And then didn't, and then loved him even more after that honk, Tom honk, after that Tom Hanks movie. That honky tonky Hanks honk, tonky. movie. Very effective. And make sure if you have a base, okay, y'all, if you got a baseball bat in your trunk, throw a mitt and a glove next to, or a, a glove, a mitt, and a ball next to it. Cops won't even question you. It's true. It's true. Reach out and touch faith. Depeche mode. Reach out and touch faith. 
correct as usual, King Freddy. It means care. Corey, the new emoji means care. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll let you tell him. I forgot. Way to catch that. See, Aaron's like... She How do you know that? Are you just making it up? You should probably Google it. Is there a, is there a manual that Let's I can read? Let's see if Alexa knows. Alexa, what does the new emoji mean on Facebook with the f hug heart thing? Here's something I found on the web. According to Forbes.com, last year... Facebook introduced the emoji reactions to the news feed as Alexa, an stop. <laughs> she never knows. <laughs> she stop. <laughs> oh, when you click it, that's what it says. Oh, uh -huh. that's easy. Oh, the care emoji reaction. Oh, amid the coronavirus. Yeah, it means you care. So what does the heart mean, love? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Duh. Mm. Is there a hug emoji? That needs to exist. That doesn't even give a definition for it. That just means COVID-19 emojis. So there's a heart that thumps in Messenger. And then there's the heart hug on Facebook. Huh. Okay. We're all up to date on our Facebook stuff. Yeah. For now. They loved your impression. So Christopher, wow, you're aging yourself there, Aubrey. That was a good show too. Great, great part for Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Uh, I didn't fight that much. I was more of a goofball. Well, I did used to say some rude stuff when I was young. We're either doing something or we're fighting. My head got hit a lot. <laughs> it's not fun to get hit. I hate getting hit in the head. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yep, that's her favorite uh, cliche. <laughs> isn't that, that's, isn't that that's that Aubrey's favorite cliche oh <laughs> what do you mean blah 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 Jennifer did you miss the first half of the show and you're on to the second half on a Friday night where we just talk about whatever yeah. uh, I love you too Petey or did I miss something what I miss Alexa yeah yep oh yep. <laughs> that's that what, what she sounds like is that what she meant yeah. oh yeah <laughs> 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 yeah Absolutely. For having Alexa. all the wisdom in the world, she's not very smart. Or maybe we ask dumb questions. She's hmm. too smart for our stupid questions. Yeah. She's like, what is heart huggy thingy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. Back to the future. Marty, 80 wick gigawatts. 80 wick gigawatts. <laughs> <laughs> Fox Capacitor. <laughs> So who all plans on being at the Zoom meeting tomorrow at 3 that I'm going to post in our Facebook group? Yeah. I'll be there. Push you. Here's your meeting. Oh, I don't have to. So the cool thing about the Zoom meeting is uh, if I bail out of there, I can keep the, continue the meeting going. And I don't know how or who assumes host, but somebody can. But I uh, hope to see you all there. That would be awesome. We had 15 people last time. Ooh. Hippie drunk. When it came, yeah, I had my moments too. Mostly just wanted to party and have a good time. Yep. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> There's her blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Come, come. Keep coming back. <laughs> Merck's going to be there. Aaron's going to be there. Huh. Murd is young, I think. I think you're right. Ooh. I just thought of a song that raises drug and alcohol and recovery. Because what kills you makes you stronger. What kills you makes you stronger? Because what kills you makes you stronger. Drug oh. and alcohol will kill you, but then you recover and become stronger. Yeah, you become it opens your eyes to something new, that's for sure. 
Yeah, it's a whole new world. Yeah, Corey, I hope you can make it. Mama Kenny, love it when you're when you're there as well. 36, we're almost the same age, Murd. I'll be 36 on Thanksgiving-ish. No. What time zone are you in, yeah. Aubrey? I forgot. Maybe Austin? 35, not sure. <sighs> what time is it right now where you're at, Aubrey? Noon. Right now it's 926 here in Utah. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? So I'm going to say 1 p.m.-ish. Tall. But I thought she said something about Canada. She said she was in a Canadian in Australia. Right? Usually it's noon at 8 o'clock. 3 p.m.? I don't know. Alexa probably knows that question. Look, her ears perked up. Hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey wants to know why you picked 3 o'clock. Oh, why I picked 3 o'clock is because... Um, all the Zoom stuff. So we're only, this is 47 days old. My Zoom meetings only, this will be our third Zoom meeting. So prior to two Zoom meetings ago, everybody was asking, hey, LT, are you going to start a Zoom? Are you going to start a Zoom? And I said, I don't know. Let me put a poll on Facebook. So I put a poll on Facebook. Does re recovering addict need their own Zoom meeting? Overwhelming response was yes. The next poll I put out was weekends because I have people that are still in the IOP group that I went to and I like them to join. But they're at the IOP every night, so during the week wouldn't have worked. So I picked Saturday and Sunday. I put morning, noon, or night, Saturday, morning, noon, or night, Sunday, and through a few different polls, it turned out that Saturday at 3 o'clock was the highest voted for by far, and so I picked Saturday at 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And that's how it came to be. And had you been a part of our group back then, you would have been able to vote. Did I just run over your toe? Yeah. You not in Mars time zone. It's not real. Alexa, what time is it on Mars? According to an Amazon customer, time is really a human construct. So the time in Mars oh, is actually close. the time where everyone's standing on Earth. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. So it's always so it's three o'clock and five o'clock on Mars. It truly is five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> When I blah, 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 blah is when I hear I am a crybaby at meetings. <laughs> Thank oh, you. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. There's definitely a difference between crybabies at meetings and people getting something off their chest because they need help. I agree. It's just like how there's three people. In the blah, world. blah, 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 blah. It's 1.27 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Crap, you're going to be late for my meeting. It's in like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I got a joke. Wow, it's already Saturday did, afternoon. That's crazy. Did you read Mark's joke? Oh, uh, where? Why did the cookie put a oh you're a self help he? book? My bad. Why? He had a. Chip. I am a. He, he had a chip on his shoulder. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Well, here Ab Rehi. It's in his name. Re. Ab Rehi. <laughs> my bad, bro. <laughs> now I can say bro, so I feel better. You can call him Abro. Abro. I decided. So have you ever been to the United States, bro, Aubrey? Aubrey is usually a f girl's name. Well, maybe it's not usually a girl's name, but I only know. Not in Canada. I only know a few girls named Aubrey. I guess it's both. It's kind of like Mark. It's kind of like Merck. It's both. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding, Mr. Red. Ooh. Ah, Thank you, Silas, for the joke. I got another joke. Where is it? That was the joke. Why did the cookie put a shelf self help book? Uh, he had a chip on his shoulder. I got a joke. I know how you feel. Too bad people have social anxiety. It's hard to open up large audiences, though. With a private one, one conversation, joke. less stress and anxiety. Amen. That's true. Joke. What's your joke, bud? How did Harry Potter get down the stairs? Walking, JK, Rowling. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. Let's see who gets that joke. But that's one of my favorite jokes. It's the same speech every time. Uh huh. Yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. Same place. In our living room. Slash. Abiz. Same crap. Over and over. But that's our time, Aub Aubrey, to practice our character defects, not criticize and to uh, have patience instead of impatience. You know, I take times like those now in my recovery 
to stop and analyze the way that I'm thinking. Like, well, that's the way that I used to think. Now, what's the new way to think? Because I got to think the new way. Ooh, I just thought of something. Just like it said in Abram Maslow, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Without a new way of viewing the world, we will most likely use the same kind of thinking that created so many of our problems in the first place. Focusing only on what we already know can limit our ability to think more broadly. Never stop learning. Open your mind and learn. Good night, Aaron. Man. Good night, Aaron. Guess what we got tonight? Key lime pie. Mm-mm-mm. It's what probably you? gone. I had to hitch all over the U.S., Canada, and Mexico from age 17 until I was 29. Wow. Southern women, huh? You like them southern folk. They like to cook. Good meals. Huh? Mm, I bet they make good fried chicken. Mm, fried chicken. Amos wants me to make fried chicken, and I'm like, mm, I don't know how. I just thought of something. Uh, God gave you a body, and why are you going to destroy it with drugs and alcohol? Yeah, why destroy your body with drugs and alcohol that God gave you? Agreed. All right. Who are we not? Lucky. Everybody say this with us, the serenity prayer. God, God. grant, grant me, me the serenity, serenity to, to accept, accept the things I cannot, cannot change, the <laughs> courage to change the things <laughs> I can, and, and the, the wisdom, wisdom to know the difference. The difference. Amen. Amen. My anxiety and depression is what made me drink excessively, which is never an excuse. I drank because I loved it and loved to have fun. Nice guy. Good night, Sky. Night, Sky. Sky love. Love the sky. I loved to party and I it loved was getting wasted. I bet your chocolate cake was magical. I should have went with the Boston cream. Went to a meeting Boston. for a probation for a while and I could easily name if complaint fest. <laughs> Right about that. I'll listen to the same speaker for another year to practice taller. <laughs> don't torture yourself. <laughs> Just if you happen to find yourself in the situation. That's funny. Loved fried chicken. Lucky. I want to go to the South and just eat their food. Yep, and try have it. a good time. Anybody got anything else on their minds and they want to talk about before, or are we going to dip on out of here? We're going to dip up on out of here. Anybody got a burning desire? We're having another person face to face outdoor meeting tomorrow. Awesome. Looking forward to it. The only other meeting I look forward to. Awesome. Heck yeah. A barbecue. When we got a barbecue time. tomorrow, too. Yeah, we do have a barbecue tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to take some guacamole. I made some salsa, but it's not very spicy. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Yep, same uh, phenomenon of craving, no doubt about it. You put one drop in my mouth and I'm off to the races. Crazy like. Ugh. Tired now. Getting tired now. Back massage and toe poppy. Yep. All right, well, let's end it with that. All right. All right, guys. Thank you. We love you. We will be here tomorrow at 8 o'clock, just like every night before, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Find us on Facebook private group. Join our Discord, where I'll post the Zoom meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. We will be here Zooming, de Zooming, having a great night or having a great afternoon, actually. If you can make it, Aubrey, that'd be awesome. If not, no worries. If you can make it, please make it. Until then, stay strong, work your program, and remember that we, we recover, recover better, better together. together.